Oh, hi, everybody. This is a Jeff Townsend Media Production. Rev. Have you been searching for a podcast? Do you want to learn from some great content creators? Well, you've come to the right place. Indie Podcaster with your host, Jeff Townsend, the Indie Podcast Father. This is Jeff Townsend. As you are aware, Indie Podcaster is currently on a break. I'm busy with a run in a network that I have through a local media company and then all sorts of other projects that I'm working on through Jeff Townsend Media. But I wanted to keep the spirit alive and keep delivering you content that you may find helpful that will help you grow as a podcaster or content creator. Fuzz Martin and I purchased the rights to formerly Tanner Campbell's Podcasting Sucks and Good Morning Podcasters. So I'm actually going to share an episode of Podcasting Sucks with you, a previous episode. If you want to hear more, go to goodmorningpodcasters.com and find Podcasting Sucks there. This is Fuzz and I talking about various different podcasting stuff. It's a great time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share this episode with you. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to the new and improved. Well, hell, it may not even be improved, but it is fun and it's awesome. This is Podcasting Sucks. I'm Jeff Townsend. As usual, Fuzz Martin joins me and we're hoping that podcasting sucks a little bit less if you join us on this journey. Fuzz, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Jeff. Glad to be here with another episode of Podcasting Sucks. We had planned this episode for a few weeks ago, but then life came at us fast and then thanksgiving came came at us fast and so here we are today as promised just a little bit later i can explain what happened real quick so the first time well it was thanksgiving right we didn't plan on recording then right right, but then the first time uh my new employer wish tv circle city broadcasting for their network podcast network they get they gave me a pc and they're hey take it home you know use this whatever and i get home and i open it up and it's all vpn right so it's like Make sure Jeff logs in first before leaving the building. I'm like, <laughs> and you're like an hour away, aren't you, from the station? I'm an hour away from it. <laughs> yeah, it's clear on the east side of Indy. I'm an hour away and I already committed to doing something that night for them. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I had to drive back and that kind of put a wrench into that. But you that. got it all but squared away? I got it all squared away. Yep. I've already good. started working and it's been a good time. So good, good, good. Yeah. So we, we were unable to make that happen, but that's all right. You know, we, we hold our own schedules, man. So we're, we're only only beating ourselves up. But we appreciate those who are listening, uh, especially those who told us they had missed that episode and kind of got on our stuff about where it was at. So here you go. Enjoy. I hope you enjoy it. hope it was worth the wait for you. That's a feel good thing, isn't it? Like, well, it hey, is. we're, what's going on? Like, where the hell is that episode? Right. Fuzz. So we have been talking about how we we're going to talk about the video video aspect of podcasting content creation. Before we get into that, and we will because it's going to tie into this, I just sent you over a Cumulus Media and Signal Hill Insights podcasting report. It's their fall. I'm assuming they do this annually. To be honest with you, I haven't particularly read this report before. There's another one, of course, that we all read, the big one every year. Yeah. But I thought there's a lot of interesting information in this one, so I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It does have a ton of great information and really good infographics, and we will link to it in the show notes of this episode. So to kick it off here, it and everybody always wants to know about advertising, right? So it, it goes into advertiser perceptions here. Podcast advertising soars to record levels. It's insane. It pitches all these different scenarios here in four different categories, Discuss, discussions, consideration, intention, and usage. So the questions were asked to these people that they pulled, and I'd be honest with you, I haven't been one of those people that they pulled 603,492. <laughs> so I'm not going to even give you all that information because I don't freaking know yeah. it. But this is just to spark a discussion, right? Nevertheless. So the question was asked, have you and your colleagues discussed podcast advertising for potential media investment? So obviously, we, like we said, they're going after advertisers here when they're doing this. Yep. And you're, are you seeing these results too? I and am, how yep. that, Yeah. So what are you seeing, Fuzz, from 2015 till this mid of this year when they took the poll? Well, it's, it's more than doubled in terms of the who's likely to consider advertising or, or have uh, discussed advertising's doubled. But when it comes to actually like 
how likely are you to advertise and are you currently advertising? It's gone from like, it's essentially quadrupled since 2015. So yeah. and we're up at, we're up at everything is over 50% except for how likely are you to actually advertise and podcast in the coming six months? It's, it's like right at 50%, which is huge. Yeah. So I know like even from, you know, as a, an agency owner, so as a chief strategy officer at an agency, part of my job is to help our teams come up with a mix of what kind of media we're doing for our clients and podcasting comes up regularly now. And sometimes I don't know if it comes up a lot with my employees because I, they know I do podcast stuff, but it's being asked by clients. Now we're getting asked by big clients in terms of, you know, how can we get onto these podcasts? How can we advertise on these podcasts? We've purchased against my, uh, not better judgment, but against my, uh, will uh, we've become a pod chaser premium subscriber which is pretty mm-hmm. expensive but pod chaser got bought out by acast and because of acast's kind of nefarious email practices i was against going with them for a bit but because we need to buy advertising from podcasters and we need to see their stats and see what they're talking Vet about them out, have, yeah yeah so we have purchase that and uh, actually feeling good about it. But it's, it's because we have the demand from our clients for purchasing podcasts. So Fuzz, real quick on the, on the pod chaser thing, because a lot of people listen to this may not realize that's actually the primary usage of pod chaser, right? It's yeah. not to listen to podcasts or set up your, I'm going to say cute little bios and all your credits and all that. That is an awesome <laughs> feature, but yeah, income flow wise for pod chaser now ACAST, that is actually their primary major thing they deal with. Exactly. It's, it's helping connect advertisers with podcasts. And so you can sign up for free and you should absolutely sign up for free and fill out all that information and like follow their instructions to a T because yeah. there are advertisers, big advertisers who actually use that in order to find who they should be going with. So. Sorry, I cut um, you off there. I just, I think we have a lot of listeners that probably didn't know that's actually what that platform is. Yeah. And uh, that's a really good point. And, but all that I'm seeing on our side is it lines up with what this cumulus report is saying. So I would say yeah. probably, I would say probably 50% of our clients are interested in advertising and podcasts. And we have, you know, dozens of clients that we, that we work with. And just to just to back up here, this was a study of with 300 national marketers and media agencies. And this is actually the eighth annual study of this, which is all the data we just covered and looked at. So it looks like they're actually literally covering all eight years that we talked about here. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just boomed, right? We know 2015, 2016, that's really when it really, really started to take off. And all things indicate that on what we're looking at here. So it's very inter- interesting on the perception that advertisers now have on podcasting like you were saying it's it's cl- they're into it i mean clearly yeah and and this also lines up with the iab's report that came out earlier uh, in november which was also talking about split of advertising revenue in 2023 and there were only three areas that increased and podcasting was one of those so it's looking like it's going to be a, a Good year for podcasters, knock on wood. But I won't knock on wood because I'm going to have to edit it out if I do. Well, I think the big <laughs> thing, it, it we can well, we can move on. Obviously, we're not going to talk about this the whole time. But for me, the big thing that stuck out here was for the first time, a majority, 61% of national marketers and media agencies say they currently advertise in podcast. Yep. So it's 61% margin is huge. It was 45 last year going clear back to 15 in 2015. So the majority now that was pulled of this are actually already currently advertising in podcasts. And again, that's at a national mainstream marketer media agency. So that's significant. Agreed. Exciting. It is. And it, and it, and it, and that just shows you that this, this, this podcasting, this, this industry is so I could break down like all the different, stages of growth in a business, right? 
but this is still an early de- developing industry from a business standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it has just so much more room to grow. And I think it's important to note that, you know, a lot of people seem like they get the feeling that it's kind of, you know, flattening out here on podcasting. But in fact, this is still an early toddler stages from a business standpoint where the industry is. I feel like at one point we're going to get to, you know, what we have to look out for, especially as those of us who are still on the indie podcasting side, is that it's going to flip in a way where the bigs are all coming in because they see that's where the money's flowing and Mm -hmm. going to have to kind of, you know, a lot of the podcasters, because there's such a small barrier to entry to get into podcast. I mean, you could literally, if you have a phone, you could be podcasting for free uh, on anchor. And, you know, with a pair of wired headset on your iPhone, you could be up and running in 15 minutes. Not great, but, but you could be, you know, but as this grows, you know, we have to make sure that we're keeping our quality tight and all those things, because we're going to about to get bowled over by a bunch of big time advertisers and companies that are going to be coming through looking to take advantage of this portion of the business, which I mean, you can't stop it, right? They have every right no. to. So yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I know. I do. You know, no, you can't stop it. I just mean to be prepared for it and to tighten your stuff up and know that you're who you're competing with, I guess. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll go ahead and segue to the next part. And this is actually originally what we planned on talking about a few weeks ago. The video experience of podcast watching, right? So this yep. report also shares some pretty good information on on this topic, Fuzz. And I'll go ahead and kick it off here. Nearly a third of podcast audience prefers to actively watch a podcast with video component. That's that's pretty significant, right? I mean, <laughs> take that, Greg from Indie Dropping. Yeah, yeah, and and like I said, I, I've just come out and said lately, hey, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts on YouTube. Yep. I have YouTube premium. I'm not going to lie to you from a quality standpoint on, on when the audio, right? It's just either going to be terrible or it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And when you're listening on a normal experience, like we are in a car sitting with some earbuds on at a desk, you, there, you really can't notice the little things as much. Do you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And for me, I don't, you, it doesn't sound any different to me. So and it's convenient because I'm able to find content that has segments. Maybe I don't want to listen to the whole hour and a half. Maybe there's just certain segments on a bunch of different things I want to listen to. So I'll, I'll go ahead and set up a playlist at the beginning of the day. Boom, 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 boom. Takes three, two or three minutes. Yep. And that's what I can listen to as I'm available, as I can throughout the day. So it's actually pretty convenient for me, Fuzz. Yeah, certainly. And so I don't have YouTube. I know you're not in on it yet. but I, And... So I typically don't watch or listen to video podcasts through YouTube because I'm in most cases can't. I'm not watching it though. That's the thing. I'm just oh, listening to Oh no, that's to what it. I'm saying. But I, I, with, with, if you don't have YouTube premium, if you close YouTube, the audio shuts off. So if your phone goes to sleep or if you, you know, lock the phone, you can't continue listening to it. That's why I don't use YouTube for podcasting. but. I like, I completely see where you're coming from. And from that respect, you know, it's super convenient to find things on YouTube versus any of the other platforms, like just type it in and it's a lot easier than on like Spotify for sure. But you know, even Apple podcasts and and some of the others, it's much easier to find that stuff on, on YouTube for me. And I'll, we'll cover it. Then we'll break this down further. But for me, it's a discoverability thing as well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can find the crap I want to listen to, just put in simple terms here. I can find the crap I want to listen to a lot easier on YouTube Mm -hmm. if it's something that could vary from who the who is making the content. YouTube, I mean pod any podcast app player cannot compare to the discoverability infrastructure that the YouTube has, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that scales much better and and the fact that, you know, it's the same engine that runs Google, you know, and, you know, as they say, the second largest search engine is YouTube and to have your podcast there makes sense. So what always gets me, and this is a, and as we go into, you know, whether you should be doing video podcasting or not, it's the stats at that point. So it becomes, all right, now you're fractured because none of that can be tracked by 
Chartable or PodTrack or anything like that. So you've got your YouTube stats and you've got your podcasting host stats. And now you've got to combine those things when you're talking to advertisers or, uh, you know, looking for some sort of sponsorship. And, uh, and I don't know how people are typically doing that when they split these, these days, is it more advertisers for YouTube and advertisers for your podcast? Is it a mixture? You know, is it all combined into one? What does that look like? Yeah. You know, I I honestly can't tell you, but what I do, what I can tell you just from consuming a lot of podcasting content on YouTube, that typically it's noted that they have the addition, they have their own ads on there, right? They'll say third party. And that's how they roll with it. So I, I don't think this would be an issue what you're talking about if you were getting millions of oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, plays on yeah. YouTube. That wouldn't be the issue. But no. anything less than that is where it would be like, how do I package this up with the numbers that I have on my you know podcast hosting platform? You're right. That would. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what that process is. I mean, to me, if I was having a media kit or something, there's a media kit for a million different things that you want to do. But in this instance, it would have that. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, it would be the job of the advertisers to vet that out and do research themselves. So it does right. make it more work for them. You're right. Right. Exactly. But they'll, they'll vet you out. They'll, they're not going to just give you money without looking into what you're doing, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll go ahead and break, break this down a little bit more real quick, Fuzz, if you if you yeah. allow me. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is important to note here, but we get into this. This is audience preference, right? So it's not necessarily what they're doing. It's what they prefer. So consumers were asked their preference for three podcast experiences, audio only without any video, 43% preference there, play video in the background or minimize on a device while listening, that's 29%, actively watch while listening, 28%, because I'm adding the, I'm adding the 220s together and they're exceeding is what I'm looking at it. Well, yes, but you could also add the audio only and the plays video in the background while listening mm-hmm. and now you've got you know uh 72 percent are just listening whereas 28 percent are actively watching but i'm guessing that actively watching number is growing and uh, i i would have loved to have seen this this year compared to last year in this graph that they provide here to see where how that's changed year to year because it, it'll be a Interesting look at are more people switching to YouTube to listen to podcasts or to actively watch podcast shows uh, versus those who are audio only without any video. Yeah, you're right. And the fact that it's over a, uh, a fourth is pretty significant, nevertheless. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. We're talking about, and we'll get into why, you know, our opinions of why you should or shouldn't, but I wanted to throw that data out there. I think it was important. Go ahead. I was going to say, I I think that the next big part of that is when their, their next graph breaks it down by demographic. And so if you're curious as to, is this going to increase when you look at the 18 to 34 year old demographic, uh, audio only without any videos at 46% video you actually watch is at 42%. So these aren't like, these are how many said that they watch these certain kinds of things. Um, so it doesn't add up to 100%. So 46% of 18 to 34 year olds are weekly podcast listeners in the U S so that's huge. So almost 50% of, you know, I'm not going to say kids, younger adults, age 18 to 34, listen to podcasts. Versus 35 to 49, which is at 34% versus 50 plus, which is at 20%. So you can see that that number is increasing as uh, with the younger generations. Look at Auto, when you get to uh, the video on that young generation fuzz. Look at when you yep. get to the video, yep. you minimize in the, and listen in the background. What is that percentage? Yep. 51% are watching. Ooh. Yeah. So they're, they're YouTube folks. And that, that aligns with an episode I had of Good Morning Podcasters recently where I anecdotally queried my 18 year old college freshman daughter about her podcast listening. And she listens to, there's five podcasts that she listens to regularly. Each of them are all over an hour in their weekly podcasts and they all have a YouTube component and she tries to watch them. And if she doesn't, she listens to them, but she found them all 
on TikTok by watching uh, TikTok episode clips and then finding, then she goes to YouTube and looks them up and then she'll add them into Spotify or whatever platform she's using. She uses Spotify, but she'll put them into whatever platform and then listen to the audio version if she can't watch or she doesn't have YouTube premium. So if she can't listen that way, but yeah, it just goes, it's right in line with what you're saying and right along with what this cumulative uh, cumulus research was saying. Yeah. Sorry. I cut you off again. I'm really good at that, but you can go on with whatever you're about to mayor make fuzz about. To me, it's, it's really going to show that video, (laughs) the kids want video. All right. So you're going to have to find a way to get there. If you're going to, if you're looking to attract that audience, you need to have a component of that. So how do you do that? And, and how does, mm-hmm. you know, creating a podcast with just audio is already work as we get into the podcasting sucks portion of this, it's already work. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it from the editing, from the audio quality, from the scheduling, the interviews and all that to the promoting it on social media, et cetera. When you add in a video component of it, there becomes new software that you need to learn or use. There needs to be a new, you know, visual eye that you have to learn as a producer of this content. And it becomes more, more work. But if you want to be in the game, you're going to have to, in my opinion, figure it out. Obviously, this is a big discussion. We see a lot of it discussed on Twitter. We're on Buzz and I are on Twitter quite a bit. Yeah. And one thing that I absolutely despise are people that try to make this so freaking complicated. Uh, it drives me nuts. Like there's no steps to do this. Right. But I, what I will say is the key to all this is this video aspect. You probably need to have the audio down first without a doubt. Yeah. Then, then you have to figure out a way that it will work in your workflow consistently and efficiently and effectively. Like you were talking about with me earlier, I think we were off, we hadn't started recording yet. You're talking about headliner as a tool and all that. So yeah. I think, I think fuzz, if you can do it and it's almost nearly automated, mm-hmm. you should do it because I mean, just think about this. Let's just talk about searchability, discoverability here. Is it going to hurt having that on YouTube? No, I don't think it's going to hurt at all. It's, you know, is it going to be the quality of other YouTube videos? Likely not, but you know, but I'm looking at some of my automated headliner videos, you know, I'm getting like 10 views, not, not a ton of views. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not going gangbusters. Uh, I will tell you what's working right now is YouTube shorts. Those are 68 views, 108 views, you know, 16 views and seven views. Those are my four last videos that I have released four this week. So it, it's starting to grow that way. You can see that there are people watching these things on YouTube. And I, you know, go TikTok is video and Instagram reels is video. So keep those things in mind. Advertisers these days, Fuzz, are very into looking at social media numbers. And I'm going to go ahead and throw YouTube under that category. So to Mm -hmm. your point, they're very aware of the presence on social media. Obviously, you're going to do your down, you're going to, like you have pod chaser, you're going to do that. But additionally, they're pretty... At mainstream advertisers, at least, are going to be pretty aware of what you're doing on your social media as well. Yep, absolutely. So if you can do it, yeah. Uh, if you can't do it well, then yeah, don't do it. I mean, don't do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there is a little bit of a cost with some of these tools that you're using. You're not hurting anything by doing it. Actually, it's for searchability. It's probably great that you're doing right. it. Right. And I think, oh, I have friends that have a podcast, the Murder Murder Sheet Podcast. It's very popular. They've broke all the news in the Delphi case that you're aware of. And I've showed them, a, I get, I've showed them a free tool to be able to do that. We can put that in the show notes. I'll send it over to you. And it's for them, like they're going to not get as many downloads as their, their podcast, but it's still thousands and thousands and thousands for them at the level they're at. That's, that's big because people are going on there and searching for that. Mm-hmm. So if you can somehow tie that in there and figure that out, there's nothing but t- there's you'll just there's nothing to lose from it. You're just going to gain, right? So that's just my opinion on it. And I don't think this is something that you overcomplicate by any means. There's not a right or wrong answer, but 
I do I, think, I think it, I think it even becomes so like this show that we're doing right now, like we're currently using Boomcaster to record this. Now you've got it branded with one of your other shows that you do, but this video right here that we're doing and the way the Boomcaster is set up, we could easily drag and drop this into YouTube and it would play perfectly. We've got our facial expressions, you know, both two uh, handsome guys with good oh, yeah. voices yeah. that are out here talking on, on, on YouTube. No, but the, uh, it, it would, this, this is easy. I think it's easier to do something like this than it would be to you know, try to produce a, a full show right away. If, if like the next step yeah. beyond headliner to me would be the, you know, not zoom call, but we'll say like a boomcast or a Riverside kind of video. And then from there you can go into, you know, getting crazy with uh, OBS and some of those other programs that you can use for this. Maybe that's something we'll do eventually Fuzz. Yeah. I think that might be a good idea. There we, we go. Might have to roll out, like bring out a Christmas sweater or something. And that's something we can do. I've got a pretty slick Christmas sweater. If we want to do that for the next episode. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea. I think that's, that's a good, good idea. idea. Like, yeah, we might have to swap the branding here on your. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I might have to throw up. You, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that offline. But yeah, all right. that's easy. Yeah, yeah. See, but here's another tool, right? That's your point. That is exactly yep. your point. And and I will say it again. And I, and I say this all the time. And people are probably sick of hearing it. If this is a hot fuzz, this is a little bit more of a business for us in some sense, especially mm -hmm. uh, myself included. I don't want to speak for you. Sure. But let's just say this is a hobby. Let's just say it's a hobby. Cause it is still a hobby for us. It is really. And there's nothing wrong with that. Even though I, I'm, I make money, I, I guess I work in the industry now technically, yep. but here's the thing. If you have, you, we have hobbies that we blow money on so much more than this. Like mm -hmm. if I love to golf, that costs a lot of money. Right. So for me, when I look at this, this is a, this is still a hobby cause I enjoy doing it. I, mm -hmm. I do things like this. This podcast isn't making any money right now. Right. This is our, this is our thing. It was a nice thing. So <laughs> this is a hobby. This podcast right here literally is a hobby, yep. but I enjoy it. So I might pay for like a boomcaster or a Riverside, right? And it would be worth it because it's, it, you, you put money into a hobby. And that's like the thing that I think is really weird about indie podcasters. I've coined that term to death, but you, there's nothing wrong with like, it's almost like it's a bad thing that some people think spending money on this. You spend a lot more money on beer and golf and stuff like that. So these things actually make what we're talking about a lot easier. Agreed. Yeah. Like to me, so I, I bought the headliner $25 a month program and it was like, because the amount of time it saves me to do social media posts and Instagram stories and YouTube shorts and TikTok videos using that is just bounds faster than if I were to try and load that up and do that myself. It's just so exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Even though $25 is cheaper than a round of golf. And so yeah. if, if that's my, I've got golf clubs, I suck at golf. Maybe I spend a hundred dollars a year playing golf. This is but my- But there's other things you do when you really think about it, Fuzz, that you spend money on too. Yeah. Oh, 100%, 100%. So uh, if you ask my wife, it'd probably be all podcasting stuff if she were to- uh, <laughs> It's probably the case for us, yeah. <laughs> yep. By the way, I think I need to buy some new mic arms, but um, yeah. So <laughs> this is what I enjoy and I enjoy doing it. I have fun doing it. I love talking to people. Again, for me, it scratches the broadcasting itch where you know advertising is my- career and this part is what i enjoy as a uh, uh, my side thing exactly or some natty lights i know you're a big fan of those fuzz oh yeah hey man great discussion we're at really that mark where we usually hit on the time and this has been awesome i think it's been informative but yet like i said this this isn't something to overcomplicate or freak out about right now but it needs mm -hmm. to be on your radar clearly 100 percent. i think if the younger generations are going to keep getting younger and they want video. You need to get on top of being on video if you're going to make it in this uh, podcasting world. And not everybody's going to agree with that, but. Yep. Get her done, as they would say in Wisconsin, right? They do. Yeah. And they say get her done all the time here. It's kind of our state uh, motto. There's one thing we can all agree on, though. Podcasting can suck. Podcasting sucks. 
that's why we're here, man. So I appreciate you uh, joining me and me joining you. However, just coming together. I'm thankful, Fuzz. Thanksgiving just passed. I just wanted yeah. to tell you how thankful I am. Of you, man. Oh, thanks, Jeff. I'm thankful to be here with you, and I am and enjoying this. So looking forward to our, our next episode. Where are we at now? I'll let you close it out on where to find s- some of this stuff. At. Are we still connected with good? I know we're on the same feed, which is amazing. I'll let you cover all that, but website-wise... So you can find all of this on goodmorningpod.com. So the feed for Podcasting Sucks is on the Good Morning Podcasters feed. Goodmorningpod.com is really the place that you want to go, and you can find all of this there. You stumbled through that, but you did a hell of a job. We'll blame it on that West Compton internet connection. Yep, that's anyway. it. We're here in the sticks. Yeah, but hey, until next time, and there will be a next time, we will be back some great bonus content here for good morning podcasters thanks for joining us for podcasting sucks thanks for listening and thanks for telling a friend Thanks for listening and thanks for telling a friend. But more importantly, thank you for supporting independent content creators. If you're enjoying the podcast or like the work we're doing in the indie podcaster community, I ask you to tell just one fellow content creator that hasn't heard of this podcast or the work we're doing and share it with them. But more importantly, I hope you continue with me on this journey as the indie podcaster. Keep being you. Keep being great. And the question is, do I stay here? Will you be back? Are you going to come back? Will you be back? Are you coming back? Jeff Townsend Media. Back.